Hello, Hardware Thrift here, and welcome back to our Lab View tutorial. Today we're going to be going over while loops and some of the uses for while loops. Alright, so starting out today, we're going to be taking a look at our while loops. This is our lesson 7 in our Lab View tutorials. Um, we're just going to be going over some basic functions of the while loops, so let's just hop right into it. So let's start in our block diagram. Over in our block diagram, we're going to want to look at our structures, and then in our structures, we're going to click on the while loop. So for this one, you're going to click in a corner and drag down because it's going to make its own little panel. Now, in our while loop, there's a few different functions. The operation panel, which is this area, is where you're going to be putting your components you want to function inside the while loop. And then there's two little buttons down in the corner here. This first one that you can attach off of is our loop iteration, as you can see in that little box down there. What this means is every time your while loop loops again, so every time it executes that program, it's going to count this iteration up by one. And that's going to start at, if I'm correct, that should start at zero and then count from zero, one, two, three, depending on the iteration. So now after that, we have the loop condition button. And now this can have two different phases. So it can have the stop if true. As you can see, it has a little green indicator there. So it's a Boolean function. It has a stop if true. So if given a true signal, it will stop the while loop where it's working. Or if you get the little finger in there, it has the continue if true. So now as long as the signal feeding into that is true, it will continue the while loop. So a while loop, basically what I said there explains everything the while loop will do. A while loop will keep operating, it'll keep looping, keep doing the same iteration until given a signal to stop. And that signal can either be a true or a false. So to give an example of a simple setup, I have some uh, components down in the corner. We're going to put them in there to see how this will operate. So we're going to have a numeric number that the user inputs. And then we're going to have an addition button. So we're going to have one part of that numeric go into our addition block. And then we're going to have the iterations also go into that addition block. So each time this iterates, that's going to take that numeric number that the user inputted and add it to the iteration point in the uh, the iteration point that is created each time the while loop loops. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make an equal sign because we want to figure out when this number equals a certain number. So we're going to say that number should be 15. So when we're running this, the numeric added to whatever our iteration is, once it equals 15, that'll create a true statement. So that true signal, we're going to shoot down into our loop condition down here. And so what that'll do is once that hits 15, so once that number of the addition hits 15, this will stop looping. And so we want to see this happening, so we're going to take and put another numeric in there, and we're going to attach it up to the line down here. And then we're going to, we got some floating, floating components here. We'll throw those in there. We're going to set this to zero to start. Set that to zero. Okay, so now if I run this, we can see that it counts up to 15 and it stops. That's because it looped. So now, right now, it just looks like we are inputting a zero and it counted up to 15, but we saw it instantly get to 15. That's because these loops will happen as fast as your computer can process it unless given some kind of time constraint. So we can slow this process down by hooking up our stopwatch here. If it'll ac actually let me click to change this number. And we're going to change that to 250. So now what this clock or uh, what this timer will do with a 250 attached to it, it'll change the clock timing in each loop to 250 milliseconds. So every quarter of a second, this thing will loop. So then you can actually see it. 
in slow motion as each loop happens. So it's going to count up from zero because we're just adding it to zero, so we'll just see the iterations count up. And it once again reached 15 and it stopped. So some things about this. Um, we have all of our components inside of our uh, while loop right now. If you don't want to see those individual count ups while you're using it, you can actually pull your output outside of there. So now what happens is everything in here is going to loop, but the data is not going to be transferred out until the loop has finished. So we're going to set this back down to zero and we run it, we run it this time. You're going to see we don't see anything happening, but the program's still running. And once it hits 15, it'll stop and display that on our numeric indicator. So that's just a simple breakdown of a while loop. They are a very powerful tool that can be used in multiple ways. Um, what we're going to move to next is our challenge problem. So I'm going to show that now. This is, this is our challenge problem. So I suggest reading the problem. So the challenge is to create a stopwatch with counts in seconds using a while loop. And I suggest pausing the video now so you can take time to work on it yourself. And then once you unpause, I will be going over how to do this problem. So to do this problem, we're going to start by right clicking. We're going to go into our structures, get our while loop out, make a nice big while loop. And then we're going to want, let's see, we're going to want to get our timing. So we're going to want to wait in milliseconds. So to get an individual second out of there, we're going to want to put 1000 milliseconds is going to equal one second of time. So we're going to create a constant and we're going to set that to 1000. So now this loop will be running at running once every one second. So this is where it actually gets pretty simple. It's not as hard as you thought it would be. We're going to create a numeric indicator. We're going to put that down there. That numeric indicator is going to be hooked up to our iterations. So now that iteration, whenever it counts up, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it'll count in seconds because our while loop is constrained by the timer up top. And now to stop this and make it work like a stopwatch, we're going to add a boolean. We're going to add a stop button. And so we're going to change this. We're going to have our stop button. We're going to bring our stop button and hook it up to our indicator right there. So now if we run this, you'll see that we're now counting up in seconds. And if we hit our stop button, it'll stop it wherever it was. So we counted up eight seconds. I hope this video was helpful. Please don't forget to like and subscribe for more. And hopefully the next video will be out in the next week or two. And that will be going over for loops. See you next time.